Hi, this is Miles Marie, the Soldier of Mary. I'm calling this series The School of Prayer. In each episode, I'm going to explain a method of meditation from the Catholic spiritual tradition. And after the fairly concise overview of the method, I'm going to demonstrate it. This means this episode is mainly going to be guided mental prayer. So if you're looking for some kind of Catholic entertainment right now, this isn't the video for you today. I'm going to teach you about prayer and then lead you in guided mental prayer so that you will then be in a position to use this method of praying in your daily holy hour or however long you set aside for meditative prayer. Today, I'm looking at discursive meditation. Now, this method is associated with St. Alphonsus de Liguri, St. Francis de Sales, St. John Eude, St. Jose Maria Escriva. Many, many spiritual writers use this method. You can either use a piece of scripture for this or a dedicated meditation book. The essence of the method is to fill the intellect with what is happening and then to respond in colloquy. A difference from Ignatius and his imaginative contemplation, in as much as we don't set about imagining the scene and placing ourselves in the middle of it, and the colloquy with our Lord is not a lengthy final step after a period of imagination, but rather something continual that you keep going back to. St. Francis de Sales says that the method, in a way, copies the behavior of the bee. The bee settles on a flower for as long as it finds nectar, and then it flies along and lands on another flower, and draws some nectar from that one, and then continues to move along in that way. The moments when you stop are described by authors as affections, affections or acts. You stop and deliberately move your heart towards God in the direction you feel it being pulled, producing acts of the will. So you read something which makes you filled with love for God. And so you let your heart say to God, I love you. I love you, my God. And you rest in that affect, that movement of the will, for as long as you can. Or maybe you read something that fills you with gratitude. And then you respond with short affections of gratitude to God. You could be moved with sorrow or joy or fear or confidence or hope or adoration or humility or desire for heaven, faith, trust. In this type of prayer, you meditate on what you are reading or hearing slowly and then let your heart flow in consecutive affections towards God. Along with affections, you might be moved towards short petitionary prayers like God, help me in this way or God, give me this grace or God, grant that person the grace of X, Y, Z. This will include making resolutions, practical resolutions in order to fulfill the desires God is presenting to your heart. I'm going to use a passage from St. Alphonsus which is going to be quite hard hitting. It's the subject is eternal life and eternal separation from God in hell. So your heart will be moved in different directions. Allow that to happen. As I read, I will have lots of moments of silence for you to allow your heart to speak with God. To make it easier, I will put in the text a suggestion for the act or affection you might make during the given pause. Feel free, though, to ignore this as much as you wish. The text will be on your screen, and also I'll try and fit it in the description box. If you want to print it out for yourself, you could do so, and then listen along to the audio. St. Alphonsus div divides his meditation into two sections. The first part is mainly descriptive and there'll be moments for you to pause to take in 
what he is saying and to fill your heart with acts of faith. And then there's a second part, which is more more mo more filled with moments of conversation with God, when a variety of affects will flow from your heart, from your will. So that in the first part of meditation, mainly we will be, uh, the heart will probably be moved more towards uh, acts of faith, maybe moments of fear, maybe moments of just trying to store up store up what you are hearing and focusing on it then the second part the second part is going to be filled more fully with a variety of affects saint alphonsus recommends that you make preparation the night before reading the material and highlighting or annotating the text for the next day so that the subject is already in your mind you can see, for instance, the way I have prepared this meditation. I prepared it beforehand, putting in suggestions for affects that I might be drawn to at that particular moment. The time of meditation is begun with some vocal prayers and then concluded also with a few short vocal prayers. The text I'm using is taken from St. Alphonsus's Preparation for Death. Consideration number 27. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh my God, I believe that you are here present, and I adore you with all my heart. I realize that I deserve, at this moment, to be burning in hell, for my sins. O oh my God, I am sorry for having offended you. Pardon me. Eternal Father, grant me light in this meditation. Assist me, O oh Holy Spirit, fount of light. Help me to make this time of prayer fruitful. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In this life, death is greatly feared by sinners. But in hell, it will be most ardently desired. We read in Apocalypse chapter 7, verse 6. Men shall seek death and shall not find it, and they shall desire to die, and death shall fly from them. Hence Saint Jerome has written, O death, how sweet should you be to those to whom you have been so full of bitterness. David says that death will feast on the damned. Psalm 48 verse 1 reads, Death shall feed upon them. In explaining this passage, St. Bernardine observes that, as in feeding, 
Sheep eat the blades of grass and leave the roots untouched. So death feeds on the damned. It kills them every moment, but leaves them life in order to continue to kill them by pains for all eternity. Thus, according to Saint Gregory, the damned die every moment without ever dying, delivered up to avenging flames. They will die always. A man who dies through pain is an object of pity to all who behold him. Perhaps the damned too experience commiseration from others. None. They die every moment and have not and never will have anyone to take compassion on them. The Emperor Zeno, being one day shut up in a pit, continually cried out, For pity's sake, open the grave and release me. But no one heard him, and he was found dead after having eaten the flesh off his arms. The damned cry out from the pit of hell, says St. Cyril of Alexandria, but no one comes to deliver them. No one feels compassion for them. And for how long will this their misery last? Forever, forever. In the spiritual exercises of Father Paul Segneri, it is related that in Rome, a devil in the body of a man possessed, being asked how long he would remain in hell, began to beat his hand against a chair and answered in a rage, forever, forever. At hearing this great sermon of two words, forever, forever, many students of the Roman seminary who were present made a general confession and changed their lives. Poor Judas. He has spent more than 1800 years in hell. And his hell is still at its commencement. Poor Cain. He is in the fire for more than 5,800 years. A 
and his hell is at its beginning. Another devil was asked how long it was since he had been sent to hell. He answered, yesterday. How, said the person who asked him, could it be yesterday when you are damned for more than five thousand years? He replied, Oh, if you knew what is meant by eternity, you would easily conceive how a thousand years compared with it are but a moment. If an angel said to one of the damned, You will leave hell, but only after the lapse of as many ages as there are drops of water in the ocean, leaves on the trees, or grains of sand in the sea, he would feel greater joy than a beggar would at hearing of his elevation to a throne. Yes, all these ages will pass away. They will be multiplied an infinite number of times, and hell will be at its commencement. Each of the damned would make this compact with God. Lord, increase my pain as much as thou wishest. Let it last as long as thou pleasest, but put an end to it, and I am content. But this end will never take place. In hell, the trumpet of divine justice will sound nothing else but these words. Forever. Forever. Never. Never. The damned would ask the devils, in the words of Isaiah, chapter 21, verse 11. Watchmen, what is the hour of the night? When will it end? When will these trumpets, these shrieks, the stench, these flames, these torments cease. Their answer is never, never. And how long will they last? Forever, forever. Ah, Lord, give light to so many blind Christians. Who, when entreated not to damn themselves, say, If I go to hell, 
I will simply have to be patient and bear with it. Oh God, they have not patience to bear the least cold, to remain in an overheated room, or submit to a slap on the cheek. And how can they have patience to remain in a sea of fire, trampled by the devils, and abandoned by God and by all, for all eternity? O oh, Father of mercies, Thou dost not abandon him who seeks thee. Thou hast not forsaken them that seek thee, O Lord. I have up till now, turn my back upon thee so often. And thou hast not abandoned me. Do not abandon me, now that I seek thee. I repent, O oh Sovereign Good. of having made so little account of thy grace. Which I have exchanged for nothing. Look at the wounds of thy son. Listen to his cries. Which implore thee to pardon me and grant me pardon. O oh, my Redeemer, Remind me always of the pains thou hast suffered for me. Of the love thou hast borne me.
and of my ingratitude, by which I have so often deserved hell. that I may always bewail the injury I have done thee. And that I may live always burning with thy love. Ah, oh, my Jesus, how can I but burn with thy love when I reflect that for so many years I ought to burn in hell and continue to burn in it for all eternity? When I remember that thou hast died in order to deliver me from hell. And that thou hast with so much mercy rescued me from that land of misery. Were I in hell, I should now hate thee there, and should have to hate thee for ever. But now I love thee, and will love thee for ever. Thou lovest me, and I also love thee. Thou will love me for ever, unless I forsake thee. Ah, oh, my Saviour! Save me from the misfortune of ever leaving thee. And then do with me whatsoever thou pleasest. I merit every punishment and I accept every chastisement.
I do so, that thou mayst deliver me from the punishment of being deprived of thy love. O oh Mary, my refuge, how often have I condemned myself to hell, and thou hast preserved me from it. Thank you. Ah, oh, deliver me now from sin. which alone can deprive me of the grace of God and bring me to hell. I thank you, Lord, for the many inspirations you have granted to me in this time of prayer. I am determined to carry out the resolutions I have made. Help me, God for the love of Jesus and Mary to carry out these resolutions. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.